Hi, Cancer. So, this is for Sun in Cancer, Rising Sign in Cancer, and if you fancy, Moon in Cancer, seeing as the Moon rules Cancer. But what I'm bringing you is your short heads up for all the astrological information you need to know, Cancer, for the month of September 2023. Let's see what's happening because I want to ask you a question first. How kind are you to you? It's just that with all these planets retrograde currently, it's a really good time to reflect on one's self-talk because you know, we can often be cruelest to ourselves when actually what we need is a bit of kind of remembering that we've actually come this far and done really well. Because if you weren't sitting here watching this video, even though you might be in a very difficult and challenging place at the moment, at least you're actually watching this. So you've got to this point. That's an achievement in itself. So let's look at the retrograde planets because this is what I'm getting at. Because when planets are retrograde, it's giving us a chance to redo, relook, reflect, remember. So Venus that has been retrograde in Leo, in the part of your chart to do with with the economy, with, with your, your finances, and also with how you feel about you, your self-worth. Venus is finally going direct on the 4th of September, but will be in its shadow phase until the early part of October. But at least it's moving forwards. So I think you will feel something in general shifting in the general energy to make you feel a little bit more optimistic and hopeful. Because what we all have to try and learn to do is co-create with the divine by putting our intention in that primordial soup, the soup of the energies of the cosmos of the divine. I'll explain a bit more in a moment because I also need to tell you that on the 4th of September, our big outer planet, Jupiter, our planet of expansion, luck, opportunity. But remember, it expands in a good way, but it can also expand in a negative way. Anyway, it's going retrograde. Don't worry about it. It's in your 11th house. So actually to have Jupiter in your 11th house is giving you opportunities to go over and relook at ideas, dreams, wishes, plans you've got for you. Maybe this is about you having more time for you. Even though this part of the chart is the, the, the community at large and the, and the sort of the greater collective, maybe you're working on something that you want to present to the greater collective. And this retrograde energy may be that respite that you need. Let's see what else is going on because on the 15th of September, Mercury, our planet of communication, whom I know you know has been retrograde and causing all manner of delays in technology, emails, computers, you name it, it will have got snarled up. It's going direct on the 15th of September which happens to be the same day as the new moon in Virgo. So we've got little kind of pockets of optimistic energy for our primordial soup, 
that we're kind of trying to get ready to put on that kind of pot, that, that, that sort of heated platform to simmer on a kind of a, 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 a platform where it can start to bubble away and these creative ideas can come up for you. Because co-creating with the divine is about you having the ideas. It's not about a vision board. If that helps you, fine. But what's on your vision board might not be what the divine knows is best for you. It might not be what's best for your highest good. Have you thought about that? So what I'm suggesting is with all this energy and this new moon, which is in your third house of communication, it's going to be writing, all manner of forms of communication, words, just the way you create, the way you speak. This is about putting your intentions out there into that primordial soup and just letting it be there with faith, knowing that the divine or whatever your word is, for that higher, greater intelligence, whatever your word is, it's your word that counts. Whatever that word is, you have to give it to the primordial soup and say, okay, Bob, Fred, Bill, as I say, whatever your name is for that divine intelligence, and within that, you give it over. Knowing that the, the divine, let's just use that word collectively for a moment, the divine will manifest for you in alignment with what you've requested. But only what's for your highest good and the highest good of others. There's nothing magical about it because as soon as you give it over, you just feel that release on an internal level, knowing and having the faith that it will be addressed. So this new moon on the 15th, the same day Mercury goes direct, is really good energy to co-create with your sense of how or who is in charge of the primordial soup. Also that day within the new moon, it's trining, which is helpful. Uranus, our planet of the unexpected, of also innovative ideas. And of course, this is in Taurus, in your 11th house of hopes, wishes and dreams. If you hear a little bit of scuffling in the background, it's not Chanticleer, because I'm clearly in a different room, but my cats have now discovered, ah, this is where she is. And they're sitting on the bed in here and, you know, sleeping, playing, and they just had a little bit of a, a kind of an argu argument about what was best for their highest good. Anyway, let's come back to this new moon because the trying from the new moon to Uranus is helpful. Anything that you want to initiate that is to do with communication is really well starred with this new moon. It may be starting, it may be having an important discussion with someone that you need to talk to. This would be great energy to fill in those job application forms. Someone was asking me in the comments, um, I mean, I'm recording this actually on the 23rd of August and someone was asking me the day that Mercury goes retrograde. So it's really funny. Here I am on the day that Mercury goes retrograde 
talking about when it's going direct. But, um, it, it, you know, people have been asking me which day is best to do. And, you know, you, you have to know your chart quite well. But often the best thing to do is to just look at the moon aspects, not even in particular with your own chart. Just find out where the moon is and what it's doing. Is it making hard squares to anything or is it making nice trines? And, you know, if, if that's the case, it just gives you a little bit of a heads up over, you know, say you've got the moon trying Venus. Oh, that feels good. That feels nice. Good time to go and get my hair done. So that's the kind of way you can work simply with um, the cosmic energy. And there are many, many websites, apps that will give you a list of where the moon is what it's doing and where it's aspecting. One really good one is called astroseek.com. They're not sponsoring me, but if you're out there, astroseek, and you would like to, I'd love that too. But astroseek.com is a really good free website. Okay, moving on with your reading cancer, because what we need to look at also is the day after the new moon, which is the 16th of September, because we have something known as a grand earth trine. Now, trines, as you know, are helpful. They are supportive energy. This grand earth trine, it's earth. It's, it's got roots. And you've got the three different energies on each corner of this triangle. You've got the sun in Virgo, which is mutable. You've got retrograde Pluto in Capricorn in your seventh house of significant relationships. That's cardinal. That initiates, that gets things done. And you've got retrograde Uranus in Taurus, fixed energy in your 11th house. Now, why am I getting excited about this energy? Well, it's because there's a lot to get excited about because this is almost like the vessel of your primordial soup for you to put these wonderful creative ideas into, to set those intentions, to really work in harmony with the cosmos and just go, bring it on. I'm fed up with being in my cancer crab shell and shuffling around in the ebb and flow of the waters on the beach. So the sun on the um, 15th, uh, is that the right day? Uh, 16th, 15th, 16th, the, the sun is actually uh, as I say, part of this grand trine. So because it's trining Uranus and trining Pluto, you've got two massive energies. You've got Pluto, the planet of transformation. You've got Uranus, the planet of invention, of the unexpected. You've got the sun in Virgo, paying attention to the details super helpful energy. And this fixed, no, sorry, grand earth trine is around for a few days. Make the most of it. I'll do a separate heads up just to remind you as we go through the month. The autumn equinox is on the 23rd. And of course, that's when the sun will move into Libra, which is your fourth house. And this is always of course happens at this time of year and it's in the home and the family. And Venus, our planet of love, relationship, self-worth, now direct, but in its shadow in Leo, in your house of finance, is trining Chiron, that's retrograde, our wounded healer. And this is in the part of your chart to do with your sort of your work, your career, whatever it is you're passionate about. And my sense is that 
This trine of Venus to Chiron is in many ways trying to help you. It may be that you've been struggling with certain situations and issues. This, even if you're not working, this could be around just maybe groups you belong to, people you do your passion with, you know, amateur dramatics, whatever it is that where you, you know, where there is a kind of political um, sort of backdrop to in terms of work or how it works. There's healing here to be had. Healing of wounds. Maybe it's healing of your wounds. And maybe you really need to make the most of these retrograde planets, Cancer, to take time out and stand back. Relook, reflect, remember, you've got here to this moment in time. How cool is that? Let's just finish on the 29th of September, where we have the full moon in Aries, which of course is your 10th house. If you have a career or a profession, this full moon is in that part of your life. If there is just something that you are passionate about, this is the part of your chart that it is happening in. Full moons bring things to resolution and completion. What do you need to let go of to complete? To perhaps be able to give more attention to matters closer to home, closer to your home, closer to your heart. You know, sometimes I feel there's this kind of sadness in you, Cancer. And that needs to be addressed. And the only person that can make the change is Cancer. You. On that note, thank you so much for joining me for your September Heads Up Astrology. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. As you see, I've done it in a slightly different style again. I decided that having my palm with five, four fingers and a thumb sticking up every two minutes in a video was not particularly attractive. So I decided to bring it down to five points and just talk about them in the way I'm clearly talking about them. So there we go. So as I said, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.